Je suis désolé, je ne parle pas de français. Et mon anglais est un peu rusty, c'est un désastre. Mais c'est pas de présenter un grand artiste. I can define like a struggling man between uh, uh, the world and the public space or a poet between the world, the uh, translation of the Rabban and another artist and another writer and the public space. We are going to in Castellano because we can understand better. One of the things that I most admire la obra de nuestro próximo ponente es precisamente esa capacidad de haber llegado desde la pequeña palabra que se le ha quedado estrecha para explicarse hasta la poesía de los espacios públicos que domina como muy pocos autores. Y esa, precisamente ese trabajo del espacio público es algo que nos preocupa mucho a los arquitectos y tenemos mucho que aprender de las obras. Sin más, no se fueron las mejores manos. Very often in that context, uh, like uh, memory, 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 memory. <laughs> I'm just coming from from uh, from Amsterdam, and uh, uh, in the State of League, uh, the title is um, and it goes on. I have to come here. Um, Act for democracy. And uh, uh, it's European, European designers, artists, uh, curators, uh, writers who come together to think about what we can do about the, uh, in short term, about the uh, election of <coughs> European election next year. And in the long term, how we can, what well, the publicity people call it, rebrand Europe, or the other people call it, uh, how to make Europe sound uh, more warm, more real, and uh, more close. Uh, what is uh, okay, so that was very interesting. So I came here at three o'clock in the morning because of the, of the plane. Because of the plane, and um, so I I tried to to dive into into this uh, situation. Uh, I called I called the the the, the title of, of uh, what I wanted to talk about was uh, your contribution. Uh, I think there is uh, something immediate, something untranslatable and unmediatable about, about something that is not an issue, that is part of you, part of your story, part of your, your life. And uh, very often in our good new times, uh, things become issues. Life becomes issues. And uh, and I think this the subject of what we talk about and why we talk about it is because it is not an issue. It is, um, it's been uh, something that, that breaks even the possibilities of language, although we are really gifted to talk. Okay, so I call that your contribution because it, it makes clear it cannot be done by somebody else. If you disappear, it's something essential that is not there. 
and we are in the culture of viewing, of consumption. And if we are in Calvin Klein, or if we are in a museum, it's both consumption. So, so I wanted to start because I think with works it's quite useful to have the, the date when they go down because time changes. And uh, today the difficulty of making certain works is because people are saturated and they have seen too much and they can't born it. Too much good information is PR. <laughs> so uh, I, I wanted to talk about the work that is that is concerning the situation here. We're in a museum. This is about a museum. And uh, it was uh, it, it was in Uni and it was 72 and uh, I was working as a sports writer for the Olympic Games and uh, I see in the street uh, Dachau Street and I, I, it was a shock because I thought like Dachau was in the book and uh, so I went there I took my camera and uh, I photographed the first memorial museum in Germany, which is early. But it was 30 years after. So there was this distance, which was the reason that you could look at something the same. This is history, this is the truth, this is memory, my being. And this museum was done in a, as you can imagine, in a very good way, and uh, the, the people did a lot of engagement to do it, and uh, it was not very popular. Outside the, 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 the former camp of Dachau, which was the, the mother of all uh, concentration camps in Germany, uh, was, was, there was a lot of socialists, a lot of communists, a lot of, a lot of homosexuals, a lot of uh, uh, Jews. But, um, it was in the in the thirties, like the early the early camp, and uh, so in this place is now the museum and the gedenk, the memorial memorial place. And so I I instinctively I didn't have a plan. I just had my camera because I didn't want to go. It was my way to hide to be behind the camera. So, the, maybe, I don't know, but at least after I saw that I had never seen the word museum written bigger than there. <laughs> okay, this is, um, okay, what I did was but it was really instinctively, I photographed all the things that inform you, that tell you how to be, to tell you what to do, to tell, to tell you, that, that give you the possibility to understand and to, to compare, to, uh, to uh, be guided. And it's 50 photographs and I put them into uh, black uh, folders and, uh, and as you see here, that is in the center of Pompidou, um, it's 20 tables 
identical, just in a wrong range. And uh, you don't know what is in the difference, so you, you could sit down in the first one and you look into it and then you can go to the second and you see it's the same. And it's all indications, all informations, all guiding of how to be happy. So the, the issue of that work was that we cannot change very much. We speak the same language. We use the same tools. So we have to be very modest about what we claim. We have to go back to the same toolbox. We have to use the same knowledge. We have to say it is sameness. Similarity is much more shocking than difference. And I think many things are just built on making us believe we are different. As a German, born in 40, there was little that I could imagine that would prove or tell me that I would have been different. So that is, that is one of the photographs. Um, just as, as an example, it's in different languages. All the things we know, all the things we really cherish, information as it should be, please don't touch the objects. But it is, I didn't touch, I didn't photograph any, any things about the third branch. I didn't photograph one thing about the cat. Please do not smoke. I mean, at the time it was avant-garde. At the time everybody smoked. And at the time it was absolutely avant-garde. Okay, so I mean, to. It was what it, but what was necessary at that moment was that 30 years had gone by, that the generation of the people who were actually concerned with what we said were kind of dying in the bed, <coughs> that the witnesses, that the civil servants, that the teachers, that the politicians disappeared and that opened the road to debate, to social progress, to information, to research and to memory. Their absence. If they would still be around, it would be much, much more complicated. The guilt, the shame topic started to ferment, to mutate. More and more facts started to be accessible and to spread. Denial resisted, of course, but faltered as a new player entered into the debate. People, civil society. And everything that I'm looking at is not memory, but what is civil society up to? The appearance of victims was the first indication that something survived Auschwitz. Society became a place of memory of the invisible. 
because memory is basically invisible. And that life after the Holocaust was not to be like life before, never again. Society started to compost, to digest, to reenact the past. And the new one, the age old argument against the past. So there was in order to be able to to happen, there was there is some big credit to be given to society. I don't say society made it possible, so I, genius, could do something. I am part of society. I am part of that expression that changed at that time. So, so the site and the theme of this work, like the the exit work is the same, the museum. And a museum is a shelter. At that time, in the early 70s, you could not do a work like this in public space. So it was a work that could be as public as possible in the inside the museum. Um, okay, I personally, I, I come, I worked in the street in the 60s and uh, I never went to an art school. I didn't want to be an artist, I wanted to write. And, um, um, And then I, because of 68, it was possible to to get with you what, with you, what, what you did, like the, the, little, the little tools that other people had to, to, to get into the visual arts. And uh, so I forgot, I didn't forget about public space, but I, I, I was attracted, like in the Trotsky sense of, uh, Getting into, you know, to enter, to enter the the glorious world of uh, the the museum world, and uh, and of course make a living. Okay, but I I started to say at the end of the 70s, one day I go back to the street, but I didn't know how, and uh, it was as if you wanted to say, uh, one day I go back to be poor. And uh, so what made it possible that I could go back to the public, to the public space was the beginning of this issue, of this debate in the German society. I didn't live in Germany since 58. So I went to Germany for working. And, uh, and there was one commission that changed my life. Uh, that was this, uh, the, the commission of the city of Hamburg, who was very active about public space. But it was anchored in the visual arts. Um, it, was, it was made possible to, to, to to uh, further and to advance the issues, the, the possibilities of the expression, because there was the context of visual arts, of contemporary arts. So the monument um, that was a and that was a commission, that was a competition. Uh, and, among six artists who, who practically never did uh, work in public space, uh, let alone uh, uh, monuments. 
Monuments had a really terrible press. I mean, monuments was the last thing that you wanted to be ever linked to. It's, and the sentence of Museum about the remarkable thing about, the only remarkable thing about monuments is that nobody sees them. It was quoted all over, all over uh, as a statement of modernity. So, um, so I went to Hamburg to, to the meeting, like the last photograph of, of you both, of Horst and Andreas, uh, when people were standing there and, uh, and you, you see the white qualm coming out. And so what was totally amazing and shocking for me was that the see the people, the, 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 the intensity, the, the, the sort of uh, almost brutality that the people expressed in saying we don't want something that pleases us, which is the founding sentence of good art. <laughs> Even a guy who is really talented for, for, for visual expression like Matisse, he said, wake up every morning fighting good taste. <laughs> so so uh, I was shell-shocked. They said, we don't want something we know. We don't want that is easy to care for. We don't want that that uh, we want something that turns in the turns life. <laughs> okay, I was living in Paris on the safe side, and of course they wanted to have this thing in the park. This is uh, this is like the default default mode of the of the of the people, you know, like of the in, informed people. Of course it has to be in the park. Why not in the park? You know, nobody goes there. So in the city, in the middle of the city was a was a sub was a was a kind of a lots of traffic, was a kind of inner inner periphery, like an inner circular road and uh, where where I mean eight hundred cars every 10 minutes came to go, you know, and, and so, okay, so I went back to Paris and I was totally shocked and I said, I, I thought I know the society. So this is like what I say, to always look at what is civil society doing and what is happening really, and it's not easy to see that. And it's not easy to know it. I don't say that, I see it. I don't see it. I don't see it. It's always a surprise how people can have changed all the time. It's always the past, what you see. It's already happened. And that brings me back to the fear that you can have that things go wrong again. And uh, there was another example in, in your presentation that the same people who helped to extinguish the fire are the people who burn. So there is not a lot of comfort in this type of work. But I don't know if there's comfort in other words. <laughs> okay. Okay, monument against fascism. Um, they wanted a monument against fascism and then the title was about like this. Because there was the right wing party, the middle party, the half left party, the left party, and the extreme left party. And everybody wanted one more. Human rights, everything, and so on, and so on. So I did this work together with my wife at the time, Israeli artist uh, Esther Charlotte Gertz, and 
So we say we, we, we leave it like that, monument against fascism, that's enough for one day. And uh, so the, the concept is, is totally idiot. Uh, it's really simple. It's a kind of a, a square, a square pillar and uh, with four identical sides and, uh, and with an invitation to the people to join us as the maker of the thing and to sign against fascism, which is mega simple to sign, uh, sign, it's quickly done. It's a lead surface, so but if you go with, with a, there's a stiletto, like there's something to write on, on, the, on the bottom, and when you do that, it goes into the lead. So actually, whatever you do with it, it stays. You have to scratch it. But that is the second signature. So uh, as the invitation is that yeah, we invite the citizens of Hamburg, that is uh, part of the city of Hamburg, and visitors to the town to add their names to ours. In doing so, we commit ourselves to remain vigilant. As more and more names cover the 12 meter tall lead column, it will gradually be lowered into the ground. So it will, it will be, was the space full of signatures and traces, it will be lowered into the ground. And uh, one day, it will have disappeared completely, and the site of the Hamburg Monument against fascism will be empty. In the end, it is only ourselves who can rise against injustice, which means the monument gives the job that people gave it back to the people, back to society. So that happened, and uh, so that was pretty in the beginning when it was pretty empty. I mean, we did not expect the kind of reaction of, of the public that it would have. Um, it, was, it was from day one an um, uh, issue of discussion and of uh, polemics. And uh, the press that was pretty close was the most uh, against it. And the press that was the furthest away, uh, like in, in Frankfurt, they loved it. In Paris, they were really in favor of it. In New York, they said it was great. So everybody likes a good monument, not in his own city. So that is a few years later, and of course the thing doesn't look like as if it was done in the school. Uh, there is expressions that you would not have anticipated a lot of things like uh, Mary la 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 so and so and uh, uh, any kind of there was. Uh, swastikas, there was uh, shooting into it, there was, uh, it was a full-time job for the city to, uh, to deal with it. Um, so one of the, one of the criticism against it was, um, it, the, the monument was vandalized. The monument, so the signature became a vandalism because the signature was not the signature as we had expected them, and not either uh, us ourselves. But I mean, leaving a trace is a signature. So, So that was very tense in, in the end. It was like that was the only measure that you could apply with 70,000 different tracing on it. 
and uh, that is the state since 1980. It is a work that was commissioned in 83, and it was realized in 86, and uh, since 94 or 5, it is uh, in that state. So there is, is nothing, but there's not nothing, it's the story. It's, uh, and uh, so as in other works, there is an afterlife. Uh, but to say this is going to change anything, I think as long as we think we only do what we know that we about its efficiency, its utility, and so on and so on. I think we are kind of lukewarm compared to the people we call populists. I think the populists, they do a lot of things because they believe in it. And I think we need good reasons all the time to do something. Okay, this is the work. Uh, it is uh, 1993. Uh, it's pretty close. All these works take years to do. Um, it's not a commission. Uh, it's, uh, I was teaching for two years in uh, in uh, academy, in, in art academy, in, at the border in, uh, in Germany, the French border. And uh, so there was a student actually who said, you want something like in Hamburg? And I said, no, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I, I, I'm not happy about doing something uh, like this again. And uh, so I, slowly, they, they showed me the city, and we walked around for like a very long time. And they became really the commission of the work. And um, so I think when you ask, is there somebody who, how, how do you manage people to get to invest into a monument, <laughs> like a good work, like a monument? Uh, I mean, um, it's, I mean, it's grassroots, you know, it's crowd, crowdfunding, it's grassroots. <laughs> it's, uh, I mean, it's not like, where are you waiting for? I mean, uh, you see, I mean, the information is around. There's a lot of information uh, of works and things and so on and uh, perfect, perfect examples for everything. Um, and mostly you, you finish up in a PR mode, you say, I, this changes the world and this makes it better and so on and so on. I think the, 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 the real convincing argument is you can start it yourself. It's a really flat. The the the, the, the plinths, you know, the plinths is gone. So you can start. It's one step at a time, and uh, and perhaps three years later, you're somewhere. But you have to give it time, and you have to give it thoughts, of course. And, but I think the the society was that that gives the stuff to the artist to do is a funny society. I don't believe in any of that, and I don't have a lot of confidence in terms of uh, how we go in the future. If, 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 you, if we need a good artist, and then the rest is viewer and spectator, and I mean, you know, Ronaldo, I like, uh, a stadium where 80,000 play and 22 look. <laughs> okay, so, so this work didn't have any funding, no. I was teacher of photography in that, in that uh, academy and uh, so we, we did that. We decided slowly about what it would be about the work and we, uh, and it was secret. I mean, uh, I got the money to make photographs, so we said we should have photographs at one point. So, uh, but it was secret, and uh, we started in the night. There's there's a uh, chateau, which is the 
which is essentially the thing of the city, and it's the place of the former authorities, including the uh, uh, federal, and today it's the uh, regional parliament, and so it's a there's a pathway to into the uh, into the, the castle and uh, into the parliament, and it's uh, for walking and not for cars. So we took out stones in the night um, and uh, replaced the stones by placebo by other stones that we got. And we took the stones to the French side and, uh, and uh, we started to, to ask the Jewish, the Jewish communities in Germany, first the local, then the regional, then the national, and then the, the East German, who were at the time uh, a separate state, uh, about the, the Jewish communities, about the lists of their, of their uh, cemeteries that had been in use and were not used anymore. So the, what I wanted to do, I wanted to do something soft. I didn't want the, the, the strong confrontation aspect of the monument in Har Harvard, uh, I wanted to, to do something light, like immaterial, like uh, something that didn't make, that didn't make people unhappy or make them happy or I don't know. Uh, so, so the idea is that we got more and more of these uh, informations we impl implicated all the Jewish communities, which is in itself uh, uh, something impressive, because the Jewish communities are not the best helpers for the best monuments. Oh. <laughs> and that is, you see, that's part of the game. That's part of the game. The people who have the most to tell and the most to live and the most uh, like the people in the east of Germany, the east of Germany who made the reunification happen. They are terrible about <laughs> letting uh, a good work of art go by. They immediately see that and they say, this is not what we, what we have been going through. They, they, it's very interesting. So, so okay, we said if one Jewish community says no, we don't give you, because at the time it was also uh, anti, I mean, anti-social and neo-Nazi behavior. It was all the time in Germany, more once popping up, once disappearing. It was all the time there, and you know, how not? Somewhere they must be, no? So, so, uh, so the, the Jewish communities were really had many reasons not to give us the, the, the cemeteries because there were still attentats and there was the vandalism of the Jewish cemeteries who were still in a semi, uh, not really active uh, state. Uh, so, but in the end, we we got all of them, uh, and. Um, um, so this is like a, a uh, like a, a document that that was published uh, about that, that the Jewish communities didn't have themselves. At the, so it's basically a metaphor. Mm -hmm. If there are cemeteries like 1,446 mm -hmm. cemeteries, mm -hmm. if this exists then there must be people, and there are no people. So it was a simple equation, no people. It was not about the cruelty, the... the so this is the, the, the chateau, uh, that is the central pathway. We took out all these stones. Uh, uh, there's 8,000 so and so many stones in this pathway, so we took 2,100 so and so out, and we 
and in the night we place them back with the writing to the earth. There was some sharing because of his experience with the Jewish communities. The one guy who didn't want to give us, he was 94 years old and he didn't want to give us his cemeteries, his cemeteries. Um, I mean, the students said, look, you have to fall. Uh, we don't go nowhere with this guy. So I talked to him, and I talked to him, and I talked to him. And he asked questions, he asked questions. In the end, he says, why do you turn the, the writing to the earth? And I was so under stress that I shouted at him. And I said, why do you have the monopole of fear? So when he said, like, you can have. <laughs> this is the map of the cemeteries in Germany. Uh, I mean, this, this one was before and after unification. So that is the, 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 I mean, the city, the city from a point on, they said, okay, something is going on. Uh, because these stones became a little bit wobbly because they had a very good cleaning machine. <laughs> and uh, so we managed to, 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 to fix them all. So, they, so I went to the minister, the president, the minister, uh, the regional minister president of the Zara, Mr. Lafontaine, and I asked him, uh, I mean, he had been helped by artists to lose the elections. <laughs> so I said, you can help me too. So, so he, and he said, uh, but look, this, this ground, this, this place is state ground. It doesn't belong to us. And there was a big police, police post beside it. And we made a, a fake letter saying that uh, this is for archaeological research and, and that they would defend the place, and which they did. And, uh, and so La Fontaine said, you, you will have to have a vote in the parliament. So we went into the parliament and we took a lot of press with us. And there was a big discussion and we got a small majority to, to legalize the market. And, uh, and, uh, and then the, the, the city said, but we have to write somewhere that there is an invisible monument. And we were not happy about that. And then they said, we, we, we named the, the square, we renamed the square. So, uh, which is now in the, in the, in the okay. So it is, it is always action, but not always like violent uh, action. Uh, the monument is on the Giron, uh, the living monument of Giron. Uh, that is, I just want to say, um, living in France uh, as a German uh, is, of course, I mean, the most natural thing. Today I live in Ireland. Uh, <laughs> nothing to write home about. And uh, at the time, 66, it was a bit, still a little bit more touchy. Um, and uh, after the different works, in uh, mainly in Germany, and, and again, none of these works would be possible without a society that is ready to look into really not very pleasant moment of its history. I mean, there's a lot of people who don't talk about colonialism. There's a hell of a lot of people who don't, who are not really engaged in talking about Frankism, you know? I mean, it's not very, it's not very sexy to talk about Mussolini. <laughs> so, or perhaps we know, we don't know, you know, 
perhaps no in Italy oh it starts to be uh, it smells not too bad so I say it is it is it's not possible without the people and uh, so okay so I just want to say like it, it was a, a, a funny situation that the, the French state, the French culture minister, um, invited me to, to, do, to do a work in a village of 126 people. So he didn't want the 70,000 signatures of Hapo, and he didn't want the, the 2,146 uh, Jewish communities involved. He wanted, uh, he wanted it to have a test. In a village, mm -hmm. but um, it is a village uh, where there was a, there was a massacre before, like in, like uh, on the way to Oradour, from coming on the way back from at the end of the war, we came through Biron, uh, and um, so I I got there with students from from the art art school in Bordeaux. And um, it was a lot of discussion with with the with the people in Biron, and uh, I didn't know what the people said, uh, but they talked. And uh, after I heard what they had said before, <laughs> and uh, I don't think that I would have done the work if I would her have heard what they said before. So sometimes it's very good that you don't know everything, that what's going on uh, on the place. Uh, because you say, oh, I have to know the place, I have to be acquainted with the place, I have to be close to the place. But sometimes it's really good not to know what's really going on. Information is, is not everything. So this is I, I went I went to the house of every of these 126 people and I asked them a question and the question was the same and the question was a long question and it's a village it's a very rural area and I didn't want that the people know the question even those who have participated already it was a question about peace it was not a question about war it was a question about, is there a chance to speak about peace? Is there a chance to, to find reasons for peace? Is there, can we defend peace? Is there something that, that, that can be trigger heroism, myth, truth, fake news? like about war are we in our culture glued to violence can we only relate to violence to injustice is this what culture is about talking about bloody stuff and um, so i mean it was a it was a much nicer question but so, so, and the people gave me the answer, and I wrote it down, every, everyone. And uh, we, we uh, had it printed on little enamel plates. It's a big castle behind it again. So, they wanted, officially, the reason was, uh, we want to replace the, the, we want to replace the, uh, war memorial and the war memorial is more like the thing that you have in every uh, village in France. Uh, I mean, I just made a little bit more abstract to show that I was not the author of the of the thing. Um, so it is like a, as if you go to to a supermarket and you get your monument. And um, so so the so we put all these answers of the people anonymously, 
because in the village everybody knows everybody and so on and so on. They wouldn't talk. So we, we put them on the, on the monument and in the end we, we left the question with a young couple and uh, so the, the newly arriving in the village and the people who got to a majority age uh, could participate and it would go on. There was something very touching about, uh, about the, 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 it's 126 texts um, about it makes it, does it make sense to die or does it make uh, I mean the challenge is really talking about peace and uh, so um, <coughs> this is like uh, some I see around me less and less people who take risks for others I myself would do so on condition that it was returned in the war I lost my grandparents gave my life who gave me life. I have a lot of respect for men and women who fought. Nearly everything is working. It's worth risking your life for, not that cowardice or fear are false, but if we had to fight again, I would stay on my side. I'm sure of it. My country is worth it. Let's hope that it will never happen again. My cousin went from Biron to Dachau and so on and so on. So we should listen to the people of the land. Okay, so so actually the whole thing is full with the statements of the village, uh, but people don't know who 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 said what. This is um, about the same competition that Horst and Andreas talked about, the, uh, the monument for the murdered Jews in, in Berlin. Uh, it was, all in all, was over 800, 800 submissions from all over the world. Uh, artists, architects, designers, uh, I mean, lots of people. Uh, co uh, uh, contributed to this competition and it was two times not possible to find a satisfactory out output by the authorities and uh, uh, I, w I was in the in the last in the last competition part of the competition um, uh, which was a close competition and in the last four four uh, four proposals the last artist who was in it. Um, the work is called Why, and uh, it's it's nineteen ninety nine, nineteen ninety seven, yeah, nineteen ninety seven, eight, nine. It was it was the climax of an incredible debate in Germany and there's there's quite a few people who said this debate which was as, as an artist uh, pretty not always sort of favoring something that you wanted to do but this debate was perhaps the most convincing <coughs> expression of of the wish to do something to do the to do the monument, so the debate was was, uh, but everybody participated. I always said, like, how do you want to cook if there is thousands of people in the kitchen? You know, it was everybody was qualified. The the the, the historians, the poets, the uh, but not only the upper top. I mean, in the local part of the newspapers, it was just like rain. It was going everywhere. And so that was, a, that was a, I think it was a great lesson, not always to make it possible. Um, and then in the end, uh, the politician, 
the, uh, at the time very successful chancel council, councillor, the, 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 the highest in the power the hierarchy, Mr. Cole, he more or less decided it. It had to be a Jew, it had to be not an Israeli, and it had especially not to be a German. <laughs> <laughs> so the why is is very simple. And this uh, like a huge area, and uh, so the, there is a uh, uh, issue of light. So there is like uh, 39 poles, and on each pole in one of the 39 languages of the of the uh, uh, of the of the, the 39 languages uh, uh, of the of the countries where Jews were persecuted. The question why, pourquoi, perché. Warum? That was the, that was the lighting, and then in the, in the on the on the floor was um, the the visitors to the monument were asked in a in a special house um, to give an answer to the question why did it happen, um, and the answers would by a robot would be day and night uh, sizzled into the ground. It would take about 80 years to fill that place. And that was, I mean, it was like a, a trying to, to do something that would not give in to the monument as something is the past that the monument becomes the past of the past, that the monument becomes the, the excuse not to see anymore the past. Okay, that is another one. Uh, that is, um, uh, it's in England. Uh, Coventry has been uh, bombed by, by the German aviation, uh, like uh, intensely, that was uh, the <coughs> city. The city uh, at, at the at the moment of uh, of the <coughs> millennium, millennial uh, decided to do uh, to reconstruct for the second time the city center, and uh, and I was invited to do a work there. And uh, that was I. I went to to the city and I worked with the university again. And um, I had the, I had a question, a simple question. I often I work with a question: um, Who is the enemies of the past in England? And uh, I went to the newspaper, to the Daily Mirror, to the to the local Daily Mirror edition and uh, ask them if they would write about it and ask the people in Coventry to give answer and they said we can swear we are not going to write one line about your work we don't like that question and uh, so we went to the suburbs the suburbs of the city it's a city of one million people and all the the cheap places around the city are occupied by the minorities that are part of the of the, uh, the migrants, the, the, the ex-migrants um, that that are part of contemporary society. And um, so we we went to the Greek people, to the Irish people, to the Bengali people, to the Hindu people, to to all kind of colonial people who live there and we asked the question and they all said England and then I went back to the newspaper and then I went back to the newspaper and I said 
do you are you read a lot in the suburbs? Nobody reads reads a daily mirror in the suburbs. And they say you don't want to be read in the newspaper in the in the in the suburbs. And they said yes, we, we, we would like really to be read in newspapers. And I said I have I have three thousand answers. I collected. And the people say the majority that the enemies of the past are the English. So they wrote 72 articles to get the people from city center, the English normal people, the English uh, ever, ever, always English people, um, to and they discuss the thing and they they uh, they talked about the thing, and so in the end the result is is uh, obelisk from glass, but which is shattered, which is broken. Uh, so it's like, because people to told me, uh, if you do something like that in Coventry, the, the, it will be broken immediately. Uh, uh, obelisk from glass will be broken. I say I break it myself. So, uh, so and there's eight plates in front of it, and it's, and says to our German friends, to our English friends, to our Italian friends, to our Japanese friends, to our Turkish friends, to our Russian friends. I just wanted to show that time moves, history moves, memory moves, we shouldn't make a cage out of memory shouldn't be our cage so um, so okay now every two years there's a there's a guy who writes from to Coventry and says uh, they smashed again the Russian plaque. <laughs> so I write to, to the to the to the city council, and I say they smashed again the Russian plaque. And they say, Oh God! They never look at it. It's in the center, you know, the Millennium Square. And um, so, so, uh, so it takes sometimes one year to replace it, or two years. But it gets replaced. Rushes, and then now we could just throw. God, I'm really afraid, because there will be the soccer championships, the world championships in Russia, and I'm sure the Russia will get broken again. Okay, so that is. So that's the. Most of the, the works were, were quite old, and uh, that is the last one uh, that has been taken 12 years. Um, it's, uh, it was done when the rural area in, in, in Germany was, uh, was uh, cultural, cultural capital of Europe, and um, I asked people um, I was invited to a place like this, and uh, we were discussing about changing a square. Uh, the one people said we need more light, and the other said more benches, and the other uh, more trees, and um, and so on. So in the end, I I just said, uh, are you? Uh, perhaps we should give a signification. We should give a meaning to that square. It was a post-war parking square. Uh, which was absolutely ugly, like a uh, few places uh, in Germany. And, uh, and then the, the priest of the church who was just beside it, he showed me the inside of a chapel, of the entrance chapel, and the inside of the, inside of the entrance chapel, which was closed to the public, was uh, a list of the enemies of Germany. In, in mosaic, so which means uh, uh, a technique 
which is there to last. It was not a video. Um, so, it, uh, as you can see, there is Russia, Italy, Italy. I mean, all the best friends, you know, like, I mean, uh, Belgium, England, North America, Brazil, China, and so on. So, Cuba. And uh, so what, so we started from there, from there, and um, I, I asked people to give Europe a promise. But I asked them also to keep the promise for themselves because I didn't want to make a political statement. I didn't want to say this is a square in favor of Europe or this is a square against Europe. Or I just wanted to, that. And I said, your name will be written on, on the square. And, but in 10 years, nobody, you don't know your promise. I don't know your promise, but you you will know that the time has gone by and that your promise may have changed. And I think for me, a society needs to be able and needs to be confident enough not to look for stone too much in order to find its own identity or its own security or its own confidence. Uh, I think there's an element of pride that should come from our temporality and not from our stones. And, uh, well, yeah, that was, you know, I was talking to the people who, who I wanted to have to sign this is a young goalkeeper who became uh, the most well-known goalkeeper in, uh, in, uh, in the whole thing, uh, who goes to Russia too. And, uh, and this is the French forward. And, the, you know, I asked the French forward who came from Algeria, and I said, what, what is Europe for you? And he said, well, Europe is clear. Without Europe, I would still be hitting with my naked feet a can of Coca-Cola. So we make publicity like everything, everybody else, give Europe a promise, and we ask people to sign, and we had it in different languages, and that is the square, that's the square then after. It was done by, uh, the light, the light was done by um, Laurent Fachard, who is quite a well-known French, French uh, light designer, who did the, whose speciality is to make things dark with light. And uh, when he when he changed the Elysee Palace, Sarkozy came home. The president was pretty. Strong straightforward guy and he he was asking if the electricity had broken down <laughs> <laughs> okay